Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Monday afternoon here in Australia. Markets down a little bit again, so ever so slightly. Really, not too much at all. Two point one trillion dollars. I think this was two point one three one one trillion or something like that. So very small amount. It's down. I mean, down zero point two percent. So very small retracement. But Bitcoin under forty eight thousand dollars again. All right, Bitcoin dominance is dropping though. So people are starting to get into alt seasons, uh, possibly telling us that, you know, people are expecting another alt season to come. Hence why Bitcoin dominance is dropping, volume down, of course, uh, and gas prices actually, you know, quite high. $4, that's for a very basic transaction. And again, you know, if you're actually getting $4, uh, that would be pretty good. So, you know, the problems with Ethereum kind of still persist. The hard fork hasn't been, you know, as good as what we'd hoped. I mean, look, they are still down compared to the hundreds of dollars they were before, but I think there's still some pretty expensive transactions out there once you're jumping on Uniswap and things like that. So anyway, let's have a bit of a look at how the market's going. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, couple up, couple down, but again, the market's the market is down in general. So what's been the best performer in the last one hundred in the in the top one hundred in the last twenty four hours? Oh, good lord! There we go. Phantom's done all right. Ravine's done all right. Sandbox. Flow, mana, so there we go. All really good gains in the last 24 hours. And then, I mean, look, engine's still doing extremely well. ICP, perp, you know, double-digit gains. So not too bad. A couple of coins moving nicely. But considering the overall theme is down, I'm guessing some of the losers are not going to be great. So let's have a look at those. Oh, Bitcoin Cash lost a lot of those gains that it was getting yesterday. 28% uh, down, uh, uh, XE or eCash down 20%, uh, Arweave down, Bitcoin down, SafeMoon back down again. Uh, it's up, it's down, it's all around. Avalanche down, Dash. I mean, yeah, pretty much to be expected considering the market's down, but more a bit sideways. There were some gainers, which is really nice, uh, and then there were some sort of losers again. So let's just have a look at the Bitcoin chart and see how Bitcoin's doing. Now I am going to do something different today. I'm not going to bring you any news stories today. We can wait for tomorrow for that. Usually sort of first thing uh, Monday morning, uh, there's not a whole lot of news going on anyway until you get later on in the day. Now that's Monday morning, uh, the stateside time in Australia. Uh, it's a little bit different, but yeah. Anyway, what I'm going to look at, we're going to have a look at the Bitcoin chart, but then after that, what we're going to have a look at is how to decide when something is a good buy. And we'll have a look at some of the top performing coins uh, to compare. But this is the Bitcoin chart at the moment. So as we can see, just staying at the bottom of this line at the moment, this upwards trending channel uh, that we've been in for a long time. There really only was a short amount of time. So what's this? 21st of July until... Sorry, what was that? 21st of June, my bad, until the 30th of July. So about a month. And then there was a little short period where we dropped out there. But other than that, again, we've been in this period for a really long time and we're still just holding that line at the moment. Yep, coming right down to the bottom of it. And now we've got to wait and see. But some sideways action. Bitcoin sort of consolidating, which is why the altcoins have done well. Bitcoin could absolutely go on a move and start to explode though, and it's going to drain liquidity out of the alts. It's not that the alt prices will drop so much. They will drop a little bit, but they will still be dragged up with Bitcoin. But what happens is just, you know, the profits up or your money is better off in Bitcoin when Bitcoin's going on a run. And then when Bitcoin stalls out like it is here, it's better being in the altcoins. So... It's not as easy, you know, I can see this now because it's already happened to know that it's happening is the hard part. But all right, what we're going to do and we can see 50 day moving average getting closer and closer to that 200 day moving average for that, you know, golden cross that everyone talks about. But golden crosses aren't always this super bullish thing uh, to look at. So just keep that in mind. And what we're going to do is we will get rid of the... 50 day because we don't really that I like to keep the 200 day because really if you're above the 200 day moving average things are pretty bullish uh, if you're below the 200 day moving average things are pretty bearish but again it's not a golden rule it's just a good sort of indicator now again what I want to look at is how can we tell if something's a good buy well let's scale out of Bitcoin a little bit I've got to wait for 
So this is how you can tell if Bitcoin's a good buy. You need to be able to use charts. And basically, one of the most simple ways that I try and find out if something is a good buy is I try and find out what the trend is and what the medium sort of average price would be. So what I do is I go over here and I'll get this. Now you need this on the log chart because this is against the US dollar. The US dollar is the one where I always use the log chart. Once I start going against other coins, it's different. And you know, you can measure Bitcoin against other coins, but really we just measure it against the dollar for now. So I grab this and I'll find a point. So let's start down here. And then what I'll do is I'll try and follow the trend. And you try and go roughly through the middle, but where you get sort of the most touch points. And this is where I would have got most touch points here. And you can see it's kind of bouncing off it, use it as resistance, using it as support, as support, 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 support. Uh, and then it starts to become resistance. So what you can do is you can chart these things out and then you can say, right here, when it's above this line, it's probably not a bad time to consider starting uh, to take some profits. And when it goes below this line, it's probably a good time to buy some because it is undervalued. Now again, this only lasted for that cycle and then things started to change. So we can see we went through this bear market. So this is generally going to be a good buy, but a new cycle has started. This is a very small amount of history. So then what we needed to do, is you need to then start to move this line a bit because that becomes no longer valid. And then your line would have to be something like this. And we can see again, support, support, using it as support, 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 and then it becomes resistance. So anything under this line could have been considered uh, a good buy, but it has now changed, hasn't it? We can see that this doesn't, it's got some touch points, but now we're missing out on this because this says it's just a good buy all the time, which is technically true, I suppose. And it only became a bad buy, uh, a bad buy up here, which again, which again, I guess was pretty good because if you had just been buying all the way through here and then just started to sell when it got up to here, then it would have done extremely well. So this is a tool that I use. Now this isn't the be all and end all and I'm never giving you financial advice. This is just a tool that I use to try and give me an indication of whether something's a good buy. But again, then it started to change. So now we needed to drag this line back a little bit and start to have a look. Where is it becoming a good buy? So again, this isn't accurate, is it? Because we're now way too far off. It's basically never dipping down below. So what we'd have to do and again, this is hard when it's, you probably need to come back to something sort of like this. Now, is this getting more touches? Yes, a whole lot of touches here, got a touch there, and then we haven't even got a touch here. Now, again, these things, these things can change. So at the moment, based on this, Bitcoin could be a good buy, but then again, maybe we have to move this and sort of bring it down into a roundabout there. And now let's have a look. Now this is a little bit better, but still not great because again, it just says that basically Bitcoin's always been a good buy, which look, technically may sort of be true. And this all down here may have been one of the best buying opportunities we have ever had. So again, this isn't the only indicator that I'll use. I'm just saying that this is definitely something that I use though. So now I'll fix my Bitcoin chart up to get back and we'll go have a look at some other coins. Sorry, I'm a bit funny like that, but I just want to have this ready for me next time. All right, so again, that's the Bitcoin chart. And again, the other tool I use is again this. So I just drew, a, uh, put this tool over and it gave me a channel of where Bitcoin has uh, been basically traveling. Whoops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Should have been about there, I think. We'll get rid of that anyway. I don't really need it anymore. And again, above really good time to probably sell but even in saying like if you sold here there's no guarantees that you would have bought back in here you probably would have still been uh, a little bit too scared so yeah again these are all just tools that kind of help nothing is absolute nothing is concrete so you need to go out uh, and find what tools work for you now let's move on to ethereum so this is a really really good one so this is ethereum usd 
Again, how do I find out roughly, and again, nothing's exact, but roughly what's a good price for a theorem? All right, we get this line again, and I'm going to find this low point. Now, what I want to do is roughly have this line here, try and touch the maximum amount of points that I can running through here. So I could do it up here, but how many points does this touch? Hardly any. Run it through here. I get to I get a couple of really good touch points. Basically, all through here is really good. Nothing sort of back here, but again, I want to have it touching as many points as I sort of can. And this is probably where I'm going to get a few more points. Maybe sort of here, maybe sort of roughly around about there. Let's just go roughly in the middle, somewhere around about I'm going to say here. All right. So this says to me that Ethereum, against the US dollar that is, that's all we're looking again, has been a pretty good buy. Uh, sorry, has been uh, very oversold and quite undersold to this point. But again, this is not exact. You can definitely move this uh, down to around about there. It is just an indicator. But now we start to open this up. And now we can have a look if we go by this indicator. It says that Ethereum at the moment is not exactly at its most fair price. It was good price here, good price here, really good price all down here until it broke above. So these are some of the indicators I use. Now again, this is not absolute. It's not everything that I look at, but we are just above the line and maybe it could come back a little bit and a better price to try and look at buying it. And there's no guarantees that it'll go there, but it's around about sort of $2,600, thereabouts. All right, but... We all know the US dollar is sort of on its way out and it's dying. So do we really want to solely compare it to USD? No. We do want to look at USD though because it is still the dominant currency of the world. It's not going to die tomorrow, but it's probably on its way out. Absolutely no doubt. So what else can we do to help us decide if Ethereum is a good buy? Well, Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Now let's start to have a look at how it's doing compared to Bitcoin the best performing asset we've ever seen. All right, we want to take the log off for this. We don't want the log on. Like you can put the log on, but it doesn't really do a whole lot for you. For me, I get rid of the log logarithmic scale for that. And then you can see we've got some points that have been pretty key. Resistance, sort of support. Again, you know, you could bring this down a little bit if you want to sort of down around about there. It doesn't have to be exact. These are just indicators, not down to the most minute uh, scent of anything, just ideas. And again, this isn't even in cents. This is in Satoshis. So this is Ethereum going back to 2017. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Ethereum's been around since 2015, so I couldn't find a better chart uh, against Bitcoin. So this is just the one that I've been using. And that's all right if I don't have all the complete history. But we can see... When Ethereum is basically below this, it's generally a pretty good buy against Bitcoin, but it also means that Bitcoin is outperforming it. But once it gets above this point, this is usually where it starts to really outperform Bitcoin. Now, again, we look at this point just here, which is roughly here. Again, we can take this uh, and we can move it ever so slightly to sort of somewhere around about sort of here. As we can see that it's been here before. You can even drag this back further if you wanted to, to sort of come back to around about here. And again, it's giving us good indications of where it's previously been. So great buy. And then you ride it all the way up. And once it gets above here, it's probably a good time to put into Bitcoin based on previous history. Came down, <coughs> excuse me, had that dead cat bounce. So this is against Bitcoin. This is a perfect example of what a big, uh, dead cat bounce is something pumps really hard it dumps then it starts to jump back everyone gets super excited think this is it it's going to the moon and no then it rolls all the way down now i like really i really like ethereum so i'm <coughs> excuse me i'm really struggling sore throat um i really like ethereum but geez you could say from the 18th of september through till probably 18th of September 2018, right through to 30th of March 2021, so not that long ago, 
you would have been better off putting your money into Bitcoin. Bitcoin would have, was likely well outperforming Ethereum. Don't get me wrong, Bitcoin would have had a chart sort of somewhat similar to this, but have a look at what's happening now with Ethereum. Little jump, big jump. And now look at where, what is happening. This is almost a classic wedge pattern. Forming a classic wedge pattern against Bitcoin. Now again, not exactly perfectly, it's just thereabouts. You know, you could, sorry, not that one. We could leave that there and the other one. We could bring this down a little bit. And again, thereabouts. This could be massive. This could be showing that Ethereum is getting ready. And again, it could come down to here, bounce back up there, come down to here to then have a big, massive breakout against Bitcoin. Now, there are no guarantees in life. This isn't telling me that that is what's going to happen. Nothing is going to tell me exactly what is going to happen. It's just an indicator of what may be happening. And then it's just all about probabilities and things like that. Do I think Ethereum is going to outperform Bitcoin or do I think Bitcoin is going to outperform Ethereum? I think Ethereum will probably jump around a bit, probably come down here, maybe even have one more test of this and come back down before it then has a breakout. So roughly... I'm going to say maybe around the 23rd of October would be kind of one of the final days I'd expect it to happen. But I would expect Ethereum is going to have a big breakout against Bitcoin. Now, again, it's probabilities, no guarantees in life. Please don't take this as financial advice. It is not because anything can happen. All sorts of things can happen. Maybe Bitcoin just goes on a big explosive run and Ethereum gets smacked. You know, Ethereum 2.0 doesn't work out so well, but this is a pennant right here forming up in a bit of a bull flag to then explode to the top so again this is another indicator i use so that's how i've looked at ethereum compared it to the dollar got a very rough sort of indication of when i think ethereum has been or what its sort of average price has been and again so i just drew a line this line doesn't have to be exactly here you know some people might prefer it sort of up here and say that no nah, this is the true line and ethereum has been uh undervalued for quite a long time and that's possible again this in here feels like a bit of a winding up pattern before it's getting ready to break and then go above this line so again none of this is ever an exact science it's just an indication but we can see bounced off it support 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 for a uh, sort of second and then we've been under this uh, for quite some time now almost perfectly got rejected from it and now we're coming down here so again please don't use this as an exact science and say well this says it has to be no again because these lines can be moved around a bit some people might prefer to take this and then put it somewhere around about there and say no it's actually a little bit oversold at the moment so you need to work out for yourself but we've compared it to the dollar and the dollar is still the king, so I like to compare things to the dollar. But then outside of the dollar, so I'm not getting sort of blindsided, what else could we compare it to? Maybe gold, so you could go compare it to gold. But what's the best performing you know, thing that we've ever seen really in our entire lifetime? Bitcoin, all right, sweet. So we come over here now. Again, this is on the logarithmic scale because it is over time and against the dollar. Now we go against Bitcoin and I get rid of the logarithmic scale. And I can see that when it was going down here, it's getting beaten by Bitcoin. On its way up, it's outperforming Bitcoin. On its way down, it's underperforming against Bitcoin. So that's how we're reading this. And then here, it was you know, traveling sort of sideways with Bitcoin, but more on a downward slope really until we probably got to somewhere around about here. And then it's ever so slightly been ticking up against it. But really, more this point is where it has really started to take off. So 29th of March ish 28th of march this year that's when ethereum has just gone bang and made this big move and again the scary part is is now it feels like it's just coiling up against bitcoin and we are hopeful and i think it's probable but not absolute that ethereum is going to explode to the upside and again so we're looking at satoshis at the moment uh, so what are we at the moment 0 0.066 satoshis is that a good buy for Ethereum versus Bitcoin? 
it's looking like it could be. Now, not the best buy. The best buy is probably going to be, you know, down on this line, but there's no guarantees it's going to come back down exactly to here. And again, then you're asking yourself, is the probability that this is going to break to the upside? If you think yes, then absolutely. You probably want to be getting more Ethereum. If you think no, you may be wanting to convert your Ethereum into Bitcoin because you think it's going to come back down and test here. But what this is down the bottom, basically, if Ethereum is ever down at this point, based on history, and it doesn't have to be exactly, it can be a little bit above. Again, it even goes below. But this is where you probably want to be buying Ethereum. If you like Ethereum and are thinking that it's going to outperform Bitcoin, this is the point where you want to start putting it, uh, converting Bitcoin into Ethereum if you think it's going to outperform. All right, so let's go and let's have a look at ADA. Very similar thing. So here's ADA against USD. Now what we can see is that this chart doesn't have a whole lot of history, but I mean, ADA's not uh, that old. So this only goes back to the 5th of May, 2018. 30, yeah, thereabouts. So it's not even showing what happened in 2017 and that. So what I've done is I've just taken this from that sort of March low last year after the big crash and then drew a line roughly through the middle where I'm trying to get as many touch points as I can. The more touch points, the better. So I don't want to force it to be up here and go, oh, that's where the most touch points are. I'm not trying to force it down here. Well, that's where the most touch points are. I want to try and go as through the middle as I can where I feel like I'm getting the maximum amount of touch points. And I feel like I'm getting the maximum amount of touch points roughly there. So again, using it as support, resistance, resistance, perfect resistance right there, support, support, support. Got really hyped up, oversold. Then it was a generally a pretty good buy here and we can see it's pumped up. So at the moment, I would say that based on this, ADA is not at a great buying price. That doesn't mean it can't go a whole lot higher. This is basically something like this down here. You still had all of this to go. So that is a key to how I will sort of evaluate whether I think eight is a good buy. At the moment, I don't think it's a great buy. That's not to say it can't go higher. But if I was looking to buy back in, I'm probably wanting to try and buy back in somewhere around about this line. And again, I could go and... I really want to, I couldn't find one, but I want to find another chart that will have ADA sort of going back to 2000 and I think it came out 2016, 2017, somewhere around about there. And this only took me back to 18th of April, 2018. So I've missed the complete other bull run and ADA was around then and it performed extremely well. But again, this is ADA against the dollar. We don't want to just go by the dollar because the dollar is dying. So... ADA against Bitcoin, very, very similar chart to sort of Ethereum. Not exactly the same, but somewhat similar. Here we can go. So what's the earliest date this one's got? This is uh, October 2017. Boom, that's the big bull run that we had, the peak 2017. Dead cat bounce again. Bang, hit a low. Everyone got excited and thought this is going to continue to go higher. No failed another bit of a suckers rally as they call it sort of relief rally before we then sort of get to capitulation this is what a lot of charts look like very very similar now a lot of people know that so it's not always going to play out this way again but not everyone's looking at charts a lot of the retail buyers have zero clue about charts and how to use them so we can see that if you're buying ADA somewhere down around about here this is a good time to buy particularly once it sort of hit. I mean, you know, we can just, I'm, I don't have a line down there, but if we went from down here, look at that perfect run through, right through the middle there. This is really where you would consider, and that's all it is, just consider swapping your BTC into ADA because you get the feeling like it's about to outperform. Now, again, this was a bit of a sucker's rally here before it came right back down and basically retested those lows. So really, this would have been the ideal place to buy on the 1st of January this year. How about that for ironic? 1st of January this year would have been the perfect time to change your Bitcoin into ADA because look how it's done. And look at that. Almost came up to some old sort of support, but again, you know, you could probably drop this down a little bit to like that. 
and then look at that rejected at some old support and resistance then it came back up look at that again some old sort of report old support and resistance comes into play again and then dropped all the way down back down to here and now look at it bang and now we're waiting to see whether this is then going to roll over bitcoin gets on a run starts to outperform and it comes back down here before it then retests or does this just continue to go higher and set a new all-time high so again this is now in satoshis at the moment ada is 0 0.00005 of a satoshi it has been as high as uh, 0 0.00008 so it's got some room to move now again that is just another indicator let's have a look at xrp similar thing versus the us dollar from its history back in sort of 2014 and again this is just a very rough sort of line it, you know this could be moved a little bit higher and a little bit lower you got to work out for yourself i've just roughly gone through the middle because it's touched there uh, as a support it's got rejected from it it was a bit of support and resistance there was some chop here and then it has used this as support and resistance going through here now again you can grab this line and if you want to you can move it ever so slightly there it's up to you it doesn't really make a lot of difference it's just a rough indicator but at the moment based on sort of all this history you could say that against the dollar xrp is probably a pretty good a fair buy at the moment considering its history here's where it's undervalued here's where it's a little bit overvalued but again imagine you got to here with it and you thought nah, now is when i should sell it's just super overvalued well, look how much higher it went but then imagine buying here and think nah, it's going to go higher so that was three dollars something and then it got down to 11 cents on the 14th of march 2020 god i wish i had have bought uh, some of that price i got in at about 21 cents so i didn't do too bad so i was around about here but then unfortunately when all the fud came i sold for around about sort of almost perfect right here sort of 19 cents capitulation i sold at and i'm kicking myself because now look how well it's done since then but that's life you live and you learn so at the moment i would say against the dollar xrp is looking pretty good let's compare it against bitcoin where is it against bitcoin it's been getting absolutely hammered by bitcoin but it had that big spike early in 2017 got way up to here so again this is in the satoshis sold off another again this is you know it is a dead cat bounce but only really just i don't know if you could even call that a dead cat bounce it almost kind of relived this here and this here are probably dead cat bounces oh it's coming back nah oh it's coming back nah and then again even that it's coming back before it finally gets down to its lows but against bitcoin if you think xrp is going to do well and outperform it it's probably a steal at the moment an absolute steal it is sitting almost perfectly again this kind of green line is doing it all for me i don't even have to put an imaginary line in there but you could consider taking some profits around about here if it gets up to uh, 7014 satoshis would be a good place to start considering taking some profits and then again you can jump up to somewhere around about sort of here uh, 11022 satoshis start taking some more profits unless you're just a full-on xrp believer so again we've now compared it against bitcoin what about eth considering eth of late has been well outperforming it right so this is xrp versus eth and you can see a somewhat similar story boom fell down then again i wouldn't really call this a dead cat bounce because uh, this lasted for a lot longer it wasn't just that random spike but then it's just been losing ground losing ground and losing ground and now again i'm not even drawing this line in look at where xrp is compared to eth like it's been down to a capitulation point previously not quite but thereabouts again these are never perfect so for xrp and this is never financial advice i'm not saying go and buy xrp but on the dollar chart on the btc chart and on the eth chart it looks based on previous history like it's a pretty good buy and the returns could be breathtaking if 
this is going to repeat, if something like this is going to repeat. There are no guarantees in life. What you can see is XRP has actually been losing ground against ETH and BTC for years. Other than it has these big random spikes, which is great if you can catch that and sell, awesome. But over the long run, the uh, XRP has been well outperformed by BTC and ETH. That doesn't mean that it's going to last that way forever though. All right, last one I want to do is Solana because Solana has been on an absolute tear. So let's compare it to the dollar. Okay, we've got a couple of touch points here. So that's why I really like this line. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be exact. But people are saying, is Solana overbought? Yes, possibly overbought. But that's not to say it is um, a bad price in the long run. In the short run, I would say I would rather be buying Solana at around about sort of 50-ish dollars based on today's prices. Excuse me. I don't know if I'm going to get Solana at those prices. That's probably unlikely. But this is the line I'll be looking for. So at the moment, I don't consider it to be the best buy, but that's not to say it's not still going to be a good buy. So let's try and compare it to something else then because the dollar chart says, no, it's not looking great. Remember, Solana is very new, so we're not going to have a lot of history. I mean, the history here only goes back to August 2000. Uh, and 20 so <laughs> that is not that long ago but we can see the best time to buy it would have been here against BTC 31st of December so again this is against Bitcoin look at the US chart it's been going up basically the whole time other than we had a bit of a sell-off 31st of August down to 25th of December so how's that for again ironic Christmas Day would have been a really good time to buy it last year or maybe yeah I think that's the 23rd so just before Christmas Day so dollar value continuing to go up, but BTC value, it was not beating Bitcoin for much at all before it then started to just sell off. But really, as of around about, again, sort of early part of this year would have been the best time to get into it because have a look at how it is done against Bitcoin now. Just outperforming it. But again, it's on this big, massive rise at the moment. So against Bitcoin at the moment, I think there's every chance it's probably going to pull back to somewhere around about here. So you're looking at 16,000, no, 162,290, sorry, what have I got? 162,600 Satoshis. That is roughly where I'd be looking to get into Solana at the moment but there's no guarantees it will pull back to that. Sometimes you simply have just missed the train and you gotta ask yourself, should I just let that thing run? Because to jump in here, if it continues to smash and go to you know unbelievable highs, that's great. But if it then suddenly, as you jump in, has a big dump and maybe even comes back down to here, that's when you get wrecked and that's when it really hurts. I like Solana, everything I've read about it and heard about it sounds good. I'm just not willing to ape into it when I've already missed this train. I will wait for the next sort of bear market, you know, big retracement, and then I'll look to build a position in Solana. But at the moment, I just can't do it. So again, that's against Bitcoin. What about the ETH story? What's it telling us? So against ETH, it's telling us a different story. It hasn't performed as well against ETH. Still performing well against ETH. Basically, 6th of January this year, you would have been better off putting your money the 6th, 8th of January thereabouts, you would have been better off putting your money into Solana because it has been outperforming ETH. But ETH has outperformed Bitcoin. So that's the thing. Look at that rise. I mean, just crazy. But again, have a look at the rise. Really, I would be looking for around about sort of here. I don't know if this is being uh, measured. Yeah, so about 0 0.1945 an ETH. Is, you know that would probably be your best buying point I think you're more likely to probably you know want to have a look for somewhere around about here 0 0.02 of an ETH uh, to get into Solana because these are going to be your points of sort of support and resistance but again they won't be exact so you got to look at you know what works for you where you think uh, do you think it's going to come down all the way to here if you do great get some if you think it's going to come down to there great get some uh, or do you think it's only going to come down to around about there? All right, I hope that helped. I do apologize for my croaky voice. I'm still trying to get over this flu, and it is a flu. It's not corona. I got tested. These are ways I will sort through cryptos to work out whether they're a good buy. Again, no one single chart like this 
will give me a definitive answer. Then you gotta start looking at indicators. You know, you can go Bollinger Bands, 200 day moving averages, MACDs, RSIs, there's a whole stack of different things. But this is the most simple way. I like to start with the dollar chart, gives me a really good indication. If something is, you know, because if it's not outperforming the dollar, it really is bad because the dollar is being, you know, smashed by almost everything. So if it's not outperforming the dollar, you know it's crap straight away. Then compare it to Bitcoin, all right? How's it doing against Bitcoin, all right? It's been outperforming Bitcoin for a while now. What about ETH? It's been outperforming ETH as well. So it sounds like it's a good coin, but you're now buying into this. Oh, that just seems way too pumpy. I get the feeling like a correction will come and somewhere around about sort of here-ish would be a great buy point. But again, just remember it probably could come back down to here, but there's no guarantees that absolutely could go a whole lot higher and just completely and utterly smash the rest of the market. That is a possibility. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that game train at the moment, you've outperformed the market. So congratulations to you. And I'll see you next time.